Okay, so let, let's start with this presentation. Um, we'll talk about LISMAP uh, current status, so past, present, and future. And uh, I'm here with my colleague Etienne to, uh, to speak about it. Uh, first of all, we would like to uh, talk about QGS ecosystem. So you know there is the desktop application, the one you use every day. And uh, there are also mobile applications like QField or Mergin. And um, there is also a server side of QGIS, uh, which sometimes is not well known by, uh, by people. And with this server application, you can, uh, you can have some, uh, um, you can ask the server to, to bring you some maps like uh, in image format or a vector data format. And so we use that to build a full web application called LizMap which basically takes the projects, QGIS projects, and uh, allows you to, to bring maps in the browser. So this map web client is, um, was created 12 years ago to, um, to help people to just prepare all the map uh, inside the QGIS desktop application. Uh, so it's free. Uh, we try to, to keep it simple. Uh, and in 12 years of development, it's not uh, always easy because features are, are growing, but we, we try to keep it simple and very close to QGIS. It is secure as um, we act as a proxy to QGIS server, so you can control uh, authentication and rights. And um, it's, it's powerful because we, we built uh, throughout the, the, the years so many features and tools available, which mimic the tools you can find in your QGIS desktop application. Um, this is just an image to illustrate uh, a QGIS project on the left, uh, and on the right is the web version in your browser. Uh, it can be any modern browser, so you can see the, the layout tree, you can see the rendering, which is exactly the same, and other features um, available in QGIS, like printing, editing forms, attribute tables, are mimicked in this map web client uh, just by reading the configuration inside your QGIS project. Some key features, you can manage rights on projects and the groups of projects on layers, on features, and some tools can be available for only a small group of users. You have rich editing forms uh, for PostgreSQL layers. Uh, you can use a drag and drop QGIS designer to put tabs and groups and uh, constraints in your um, inputs. You can print uh, maps in PDF or other format with a map layout, uh, QGIS map layout, and also export atlases based on features on layers. There is a data viz, as you can see in the, in the GIF, so that you can do pie charts uh, or bar charts or any, any available charts. And we, since the, the beginning, we try to use a lot the relation concept inside QGIS, allowing to have parent uh, objects related to child objects, like a road and a road works, so that you can uh, do some uh, a visualization to help uh, see your data, and you can also uh, filter, uh, cascading filter your, your data to focus on, uh, for example, one district like here or one road, um, if uh, if you like. I let uh, Etienne present the Lismap extension. Yes. So to be able to publish your project on Lismap, we rely on the QGIS plugin called Lismap as well. Uh, so the plugin is very useful because you can easily like uh, configure the project. We are using ob obviously the QGIS API and we do a lot of checks and everything. So you can enable quite a few tools that you can see on the left side. So here, for instance, we are on the Atlas or Locate by Layer. Or at the top, you can see we can enable uh, the attribute table or which layer you want to edit from the web browser. Etc. So there are quite a few tools. Um, and one new thing in the plugin is uh, 
because we are using the QGIS API, we are able to uh, do a lot of checks on your project because as we are a hosting solution of this map, we are hosting quite a, lo a lot of projects. So we know by experience uh, that we might encounter some uh, security issue with some projects made by our customers or users. For instance, uh, we can recommend using PostgreSQL SSL connections, uh, or if people are using services to connect to PostgreSQL. Uh, for performance issues, uh, like uh, metadata, uh, instead of asking PostgreSQL database, like which extent, how many features do you have, uh, what is the geometry, we can ask QGIS to trust the project, to trust the XML metadata, it's quicker and faster to load for QGIS server. Uh, we can recommend some good practice, uh, like as we can see in the screenshot at the bottom, uh, we are detecting if a PostgreSQL layer is missing a proper primary key, there is no like uh, a serial uh, field in the table. Also, uh, we can prevent some issues that we might encounter later. Uh, if you are using um, a raster format, uh, ECW, for licensing reason, we can't use ECW with QGIS server, and people might add one in their project, and it will just not be displayed with QGIS server uh, because of licensing issues. So these rules is just uh, like here to help you. Uh, as you can see, there is some severity, like some are blocking, because we consider like a, it's an easy one to fix. Uh, it's uh, something that you will have issues later. Um, and then some of them are important, so it's, you, you must have a look soon. We don't block you in your workflow. Uh, we don't want to uh, raise a big blocker just uh, suddenly. Uh, so be careful, just look at these important uh, rules. Let's get back uh, one hour ago. So we released uh, Lismap 3.7. So this is an overview of some key features. So we work again on the, um, on the legend. Um, that was a very expected feature, is the way that uh, we can check and uncheck uh, items within a categorized uh, legend, the same as in QGIS. So you see on QGIS on the left and Lismap on the right. And uh, then another way that we can manage base layers, uh, we are using uh, some special groups. We have some special keywords. So one group is called base layers on the left. And on the right, we know that it's only base layers, so we transform this as a drop-down menu. So we can only select one layer. And this was a lot of work on the JavaScript side, so there is a kind of new API and we are uh, quite happy with what we have done so far with this JavaScript API. As Michael said, this map was like, uh, I mean, we had to do some refactoring, so it has been like a, a very nice uh, code uh, refactoring in, uh, on this side. Printing layouts, um, now we can choose in a dedicated panel in the plugin, uh, which layouts, uh, either Atlas or non-Atlas, you want to publish on the web, you can choose the default format, you can choose um, which groups uh, in this map are allowed to print this layout. Uh, some improvements on the relation management. Uh, I guess you know in the QGIS project properties, you can set up um, relations between tables to define like one-to-many relationship. So here, for instance, um, we respect, like uh, if you do a drag and drop form layout, we respect the correct widget position uh, where we can uh, uh, like uh, display uh, related features when there is one too many re relationship. Also, we can add features uh, with the button, um, yes, to add the new child uh, related to the current uh, parent. Also some improvements on the web interface about like a uh, new text uh, label item. So we can uh, write, for instance, Arbor here. Um, we can have some constraints uh, on the right. Uh, like uh, here we can, like in QGIS when you do some snapping and you can like say, okay, I want only to draw uh, 90 degrees angles. 
So it's drawing uh, constraints like the drawing. Uh, so it's yeah very similar as in QGIS. Um, also in QGIS, you have what we call actions in QGIS. So we have a similar concept. We also call it action. It's not exactly the same. It's similar. And uh, it was already existing before, but we added new context of uh, actions. Um, so we can, I mean, an action is like you run, you can add some custom buttons or custom um, SQL code in your project to fit your application. Uh, so for instance, in this uh, screenshot, we want to select all buildings which are uh, within 150 meters from the house. So this is for this project for a demo purpose. Um, we have a custom icon. Here I can select the fire station, the closest one, by flying distance. This is not native in this map. It's not like uh, we didn't uh, make uh, like uh, uh, select uh, houses uh, in a, within a layer button. But it, you can add your custom functions and custom icon with some custom uh, SQL code behind. Okay, so I will uh, now talk a little bit about uh, Lismap 3.8, which uh, we released uh, last week. So we are quite happy with, with that. Uh, it won't be a, a, a um, full featured presentation today. Uh, we will present that probably a, a bit later on, but uh, we have some new features. Um, some of them were uh, contributed by Fonalia, which is uh, another uh, open source JS company uh, based um, mainly in Italy. And um, one of the, um, the great changes is the tooltip features when you can hover uh, features on the map and have a, a small bubble popping up uh, describing the things. You can now use expressions uh, in QGIS to, uh, to, to display uh, whenever, uh, whatever you want. If uh, you want to change the color of the police of the, or display an image. And we have a new web component uh, which will ease, uh, a bit like in QField, the way we present uh, child features under the main feature. For example, here, uh, there is a quarter and there is sub-quarters. And when you click on the map, you see the, what we call the pop-up, uh, the information panel of the, the feature. And underneath, you can see a list of, of features. Uh, you can choose a filter to display only some features. You can choose uh, a sorting order by uh, any uh, attributes. And we also have a drag and drop capability. Uh, so you can reorder uh, items. And uh, if you know a bit of JavaScript, do something with that. Um, so this is uh, what we call the web component. So you can use it anywhere in the application. You just uh, write uh, the, the, the bit of code needed uh, in 3.8 and in 3.9 we will use it uh, in different places. Um, I would like to also um, speak a little bit about uh, Lismap modules. Um, it's not in Lismap core uh, code, source code, but it, it can uh, add some new features. For example, for a customer, uh, they need some cadastral application to search among uh, tenants or owners of, um, of parcels or uh, buildings. Um, I will speak about the presentation module. We just finished this one and we're pretty, yeah, we are really proud of it. It's like the presentation I'm doing now. Uh, it's a web presentation. It's based on a Lismap project. So any QGIS project you, you published. And you can, um, you can go from one page to the other, you can choose to zoom to a specific area to select or unselect several layers. And so you can uh, tell a story uh, with a Lismap uh, application and still uh, be able to use all the other tools uh, if you need it, like the pop-up, the attribute table, editing solution. So we just released this one and uh, hopefully it will land in Lismap uh, in the next versions. Another module is PG routing. Uh, you probably heard about uh, PG routing extension in PostgreSQL. Uh, it allows you to create your own 
edges and nodes table to have a road graph network. And you can, uh, you have functions in PostgreSQL, so you can say from A to B, show me the way uh, throughout my, my graph, my road network. And there is um, a module in this map uh, allowing the user to just click on the map like you do in Google Maps. You can add several steps and then move the nodes and uh, choose exactly the, um, the, the path you, you need to, yeah, to, to go. And uh, it's based on your data, not an external API, so you have complete control of uh, the routing uh, engine with uh, PG routing extension. Last one I would like to present, the WPS module. Uh, basically, uh, this WPS word, it's about the protocol to run a processing algorithm. Um, you know the processing toolbox in QGIS to do a buffer or, th or other uh, algorithm, and you can use that um, in your browser inside this map. So you let the user uh, fill in the form for the entry, uh, the, the inputs of your algorithm, and then just play, and it runs in background, and you can have the results in one minute, or 15 minutes, or 12 hours if needed. It's asynchronous, so you, you're not obliged to wait for the result to be popped up, but you can go back tomorrow morning if you have a really heavy uh, processing uh, running. And uh, we'll, uh, yeah, let Etienne go on. And we'll go on with the future of this map now. So uh, we just released version 3.8, but we are already thinking to version 3.9. Obviously, we have quite a few ideas. Uh, as Michael said, we started a work about like the compact list of features, like the screenshot before. So we'll continue this work. Um, as you know, there are quite a few versions of QGIS per year, so we need to follow up <laughs> and to catch up with uh, new features of QGIS. Sometimes people are asking, hey, I did this in QGIS. Uh, yeah, so we need to port it to Lismap. So with editing form capabilities, there are quite a few uh, features about uh, group visibility with, I mean, like, uh, I mean, um, layouts, containers, box, etc. Um, we are also to add like some copy paste geometries between different tools. This is done like uh, with a refactoring of the under the hood or the code and to make something centralized. Um, integrate the presentation module that Michael was uh, showing you uh, before. And also we have some work to do with our community. It's you. Uh, you know, in open source, it's difficult to know our, uh, our users of uh, open source products. And, uh, yeah, we would like to make something like uh, more social and open. And we're happy that we have uh, Fonalia, the Italian company, uh, contributing to the source code. So we could uh, organize some online events. Or also like to know which features you would like to see uh, in this map. So, yeah, just come to see us or like uh, come on the, uh, the discourse um, from the OSGO and um, yeah, ask us questions. Thanks for your attention. This is some links. You can check our demo. And uh, the source code is on GitHub um, slash release. You will have Lismap Repliant, Lismap Plugin, QG Server Plugins, etc. Yes, thanks. Thank you for the presentation. And are there questions for the guys? Okay. Great presentation. Thanks, guys. Um, my question is, so you spoke about using processing algorithms within Lismap online. Um, I was going to ask if there is an ability to use custom processing algorithms or plugins or any idea of integrating that in the future. And also, where does this processing occur? Does it occur locally or online in some server somewhere? Okay, uh, I haven't understood the first question, but I will answer the second. And then it, uh, it runs uh, in the server. Uh, we, we built up a whole system that you can have 
uh, one, two, three servers. Um, yeah, just uh, and some clients here in Lismap can ask questions uh, with the WPS protocol, but you will use the, the new processing OGC protocol soon. And um, it's a complete independent stack uh, made to, to, to run jobs uh, asynchronously with a queuing system. And uh, so it's not, I click, I wait, it's uh, I click, there is a queue of, uh, of processing uh, uh, running. And Lismap is just a client which asks, uh, okay, uh, what is the status of the jobs? So um, it's uh, the PyWPS, uh, Py WPS QGs, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, um, it's open source, you can try it. There is a Docker to play with it uh, if you like. And what was your first question? The first one was talking about the processing. You guys were talking about you can uh, set it up to use processing within Lismap. Um, I was asking if, uh, is that just standalone, like QJS core built-in processing, or can yeah. you, it, it, or is it's there an ability to expand that? It's uh, made only, uh, it's compatible only with QJS processing. Uh, for our cli client in Lismap, we only allow models uh, because it's safer. Uh, just put a model and then QJS uh, can do some stuff. And we have a, a control of the, the, the algorithm um, uploaded. For some other cases, uh, on-premise or uh, clients that very, really know the, what they do, they can use some R scripts or uh, anything you can put in the QGIS processing um, tool to, to run. So there is no limitation. Thank you. You're welcome. Another question from someone? Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, for my pictures, it's uh, quite uh, desktop oriented uh, design. How well work is on a mobile platform uh, or phone? It's a lot of work in progress. Uh, it's been what we call um, mobile ready uh, since a long time. We try to adapt the, the interface, but we can have some tools still not really made to adapt to the, to the screen, but um, yeah, we have some users using it in the field with tablets or phones. And uh, depending on how complex, uh, the, how many tools you, you put there, it can be perhaps cumbersome. For example, the presentation module, it's, you have a split view, vertical split view, Obviously, it will work in landscape mode much more than in vertical mode. Um, but we are, um, we put efforts on that. It's a continuing effort. We know it's like 70, 80 percent okay. And for, we have to improve on some pieces of the, the interface. But we, our goal is that it's mobile friendly. It's not another uh, interface, but the interface adapts with the with your laptop or mobile or tablet, it is not 100% perfect at present. Okay, anyone else with a question? So I have one that is maybe a little bit off topic, but uh, how was the transfer from uh, Twitter to Mastodon? How did you find it? <laughs> you, I, I can. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, the transfer has not happened yet. <laughs> I mean, we, it's, we have a list map for a QGIS uh, accounts. And we, I mean, the, the Twitter changes uh, during the two, three the years. I've just, in my humble opinion, just stopped me using Twitter. So I was, uh, I was active in Twitter, uh, I'm not anymore. And we, are, uh, as three Liz and Lizmap, were active too. But um, if you look at Twitter, it's not active anymore. And we, we really need to communicate more, as we said, and to fill it, this gap. Um, I would love to have an open source application allowing to publish to Twitter, but don't look at it, to Mastodon, to LinkedIn, to all the, the things, but yeah, our goal is to 
go to Mastodon, but not only uh, this one. Yeah, thank you. So if there are some questions, you can we can still uh, have some more. Or if not, then thank you guys. Merci beaucoup. You're welcome.